everyone in this lecture we will discuss about vernacular case examples so we will see the examples of like vernacular design from the uh, architecture like how uh, uh, these designs have evolved over time and how they have been uh, uh, addressing the actually climate related uh, responses as far as like a building is concerned uh, a habitation unit is concerned uh, in like a different uh, geographical and climatic locations so if you see like uh, according to the foster what is vernacular so vernacular architecture can typically be understood to be a region's indigenous local building customs materially and the milieu in which it arises vernacular architecture is an architectural style that is designed based on local needs availability of construction materials and reflecting local traditions at least originally vernacular architecture did not use formally schooled architects but relied on the design skills and traditions of local builders so you can see like a vernacular architecture is part of uh, uh, a local culture you know a culture in an overall sense uh, uh, involves like art music you know a food habits you know clothing uh, even architecture so this vernacular architecture has a lot to do, do with that uh, particular place and uh, it evolves while uh, uh, you know passing through like generations and generations like how the people of that place or that community you know uh, find resources in the vicinity in the like a uh, local surrounding areas you know whatever they could uh, uh, source in a like a, in a more like natural way more like a you know subtle way you know without actually bringing stuff from like a far away places you know or very distant uh, like a places or maybe a manufactured uh, things like a, from like a factories and manufacturing units what we are actually getting uh, like a supplies from these days so uh, not actually using those kind of materials but using very very raw very very local you know very very authentic natural materials such as like adobe thatch you know bamboo stone whatever they can found in that place and that is why you will see the uh, characteristic of the vernacular architecture and the features of these vernacular architectures they actually change from place to place because they are very very rooted to that particular place so this is the one region so why this is important to understand over here in this actually uh, globalized form of architecture which is evolving in the recent years in these days you know so there is a trend that uh, the buildings for irrespective of the location of that uh, particular slide you know it's they're all uh, almost the same because they're utilizing the same construction materials and there is one actually uh, a global structural system which has evolved you know so irrespective of the uh, place you know it is all the same everywhere and uh, irrespective of like a, a distance we are able to still like a source and uh, get those materials which are manufactured from like a, a very distant places within the country or even like outside the country so like uh, in this uh, globalization scenario this vernacularity uh, of the architecture is getting lost you know so well uh, there are several advantages to this uh, actually going for this uh, globalized uh, way of like uh, developing and designing architecture but there are some disadvantages also well disadvantages are uh, the biggest ones what we can uh, like uh, see like uh, they are not utilizing the uh, natural elements and natural things which are available in the uh, surrounding but we are relying on the uh, electricity based actually gadgets tools you know mechanical systems you know to fulfill uh, the comfortable actually uh, requirements in any given building for example like temperature humidity wind you know sound so we are actually relying on mechanical methods of uh, controlling these things irrespective of going along with the nature so that is one of the reasons actually uh, things are uh, uh, have actually changed in the recent time so we will see some examples there is one very famous uh, crafts museum so in new delhi so this museum uh, has a uh, several artifacts of like a craft and all but it uses if you see the building itself the premises of this uh, craft museum itself okay this is made up uh, uh, this is constructed in an, a very like a vernacular, uh, vernacular way. It, it appears like yes, it's a piece from like a, a older time. That it, it it's a piece which belongs to like a, maybe a local area, you know. So it uses actually you see these materials, you know, these uh, like a roofing materials, these walling, like a 
these uh, uh, patterns which are drawn on drawn on the surface of this like a building you know the the, the stone which is to usage you know the other features other decorative elements which it uses they are all sourced actually from like a different places of india and it uh, actually as a one unit of one new museum of like a this kind of it's like a unique kind it represents actually several uh, uh, rich actually vernacular traditions and uh, heritage architectural heritage of like a different parts of the country at one place so uh, i would suggest you must take a visit whenever you are uh, reaching like a city of the new delhi because you will get from like a an architects or engineers and designers perspective like how humane the space is how humane the uh, the materials used in the buildings could be and how humane the overall approach could be towards you know living in the sink with the nature so that is actually idea which you will uh, realize after looking at this building so as you can see in this picture it's a courtyard is a typical courtyard uh, uh, actually arrangement which is given over here so this uh, actually uh, in this uh, you can see like uh, there is a, like a courtyard you know planned on the uh, in the inner inner side of this uh, like a building and there are like a trees you know and there is one actually tulsi plant also uh, plant also planted over here and the entrance actually door on the one side and other like a, uh, the rooms on the like a sides they have their own actually respective uh, like doors and the windows of these uh, these doors they open inside the courtyard they may be having like a other uh, windows also on the opposite side who may be opening on the other side of the building so this actually if you see this is nothing much but it's a very subtle you know architectural system integrated over here of uh, ventilation and shading from like a uh, sun and rain so why these uh, covered uh, pathways and these corridors to protect from the like a direct sunlight and uh, maybe direct rain so it is very typical uh, if you see like so from where it could belong to obviously it, this belongs to like uh, most parts of the india because india in general is a like a uh, warm and uh, humid and subtropical actually country so this is the actually characteristic of uh, uh, india as a like a one geographical entity and uh, this is the one actually architectural system which follows uh, in the like a length and breadth of india starting from the like a northern uh, gangetic plains till the like a, a courtyard houses of like a tamil nadu and uh, a kerala you know even in the middle of the india on the west side of the india you know on the east side of the india so th we can say like uh, this courtyard planning is a very typical actually a feature of vernacular architecture from india so there may be some uh, uh, further details which vary from region uh, to region so in this slide uh, if you see this is a, a typical actually architectural uh, piece from like a himachal pradesh so it utilizes uh, these uh, stone blocks for creating uh, the main wall and on top of that uh, there is like a uh, wood or timber actually uh, uh, constructed uh, this house which utilizes again this uh, pitched roofing over here with the tiles in order to like a uh, uh, slide over the uh, snow which falls in the like a uh, winter times you know so this is a typical uh, structure from like himachal pradesh you know similarly uh, you can see this building over here it's a new adaptation of the older like a uh, vernacular architectural system utilizing a combination of the new uh, with the older uh, traditions and here you can see these uh, 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 this uh, pitched roof again for like uh, the purpose of uh, uh, this uh, draining of the like a uh, water and snow and you can see the jalis over here at the top of this building so this is for mainly for actually uh, enabling uh, ventilation in the main part of this building over here so that uh, the warm air which rises within the space may actually uh, continue its uh, you know the movement you know from, from one side to the other side and allowing the fresh air allowing the cooler air to come inside and the stale air to go outside okay some more examples you can see from across the world uh, these structures if you see from like a the, uh, the the whether we see it there like a geometrical form or we see there like a uh, the material or the texture you know or the appearance or the detailing so they feel like they have evolved in that particular time as you can see the uh, on the first picture on the left side okay so there is a, like a hilly area with the uh, like a stone uh, in abundance so this actually structure uses stone on top of that it is layered with the like a mud and it has like a thatched roofs this conical roofs to allow actually water to 
uh, seep out uh, easily so you can see it follows the topography of the land also okay there is no actually man made cut made in the like a, a foothill of this uh, particular hill over here but uh, yeah in the recent times it is a very rampant practice to uh, cut the hills in like a l shape and uh, clear out the land okay which uh, leads to further like a, a destabilization of the destabilization of the like a stone you know on the like a upper sides and as a resultant that there are like a several like a landslides uh, activities uh, you know promoted by actually this uh, human activity so how beautifully this uh, actually piece of architecture fits into this place okay it looks like a piece from like a, a fairy land or a wonderland like how these uh, architectural systems have evolved with the small small detailings you can see like uh, the bamboo and timber pieces are actually coming out so these are the actually structural members used inside the actually houses to create like a, a mezzanine floors or even like a, a roofings and other like a structures and the roof supporting structures and uh, even uh, you can see on the like a uh, front surfaces of these walls there are some uh, actually figurings which uh, and uh, some uh, like a uh, you know uh, stucco actually work which talks about uh, maybe it's a representation of that particular tribe or the maybe the social straight out of uh, strata of it or something or maybe a name or something like that so how beautifully it is integrated in the same material without actually bringing in other like a third third material similarly in the second picture you can see uh, this also follows this uh, stilt you know construction system you know raising the entire like habitation area you know uh, as high as like eight to nine feet over here from the, like a ground floor so from the ground surface so it is very evident that there may be some uh, actually climatic uh, uh, actually uh, maybe impacts or something on this uh, uh, area maybe flooding or maybe water logging at some point of the year and to safeguard or maybe even like some regions for example like a, a storage for the cattle or maybe a shed for the cattle or maybe a keeping some other like a utilitarian stuff on the ground level you know or maybe uh, this land falls in some maybe forest area infesting a lot of with the uh, like a reptiles and other like a such creatures to allow them uh, like a free movement and safeguard actually the family quarters you know this structure is uh, actually uh, stilted so such examples we can find uh, in plenty from like our own northeast india where uh, some states for example like meghalaya assam you know uh, and, and nagaland they use actually such a, like a stilt uh, structures because uh, assam like you mostly aware of uh, these uh, kajiranga national park so if you go to like uh, that area uh, this that actually area receives a huge amount of like a uh, flooding and waters from the river brahmaputra for uh, like uh, several months every year almost at the time of the, like a uh, uh, monsoons so this actually kind of like architecture allows water to uh, flow naturally without, without causing the much damage to the structure because these are the only columns which are uh, coming in the way of the like a water not the entire structure because if the entire structure comes there will be a bigger and wider surface area you know resisting the water thus the gush of the water and water in the brahmaputra flows in a very high quantity uh, brahmaputra you may be knowing is the largest and biggest river uh, in terms of like a uh, carrying the volume of the water you know per second so it, it creates like a, a lot of havoc every year so such kind of solutions are very very uh, uh, you know rooted to that place as you can see over here these two structures uh, from the right side you can see like they are these uh, uh, conical like a uh, uh, spherical like a conical spherical combination they are like a created over here and it's clearly visible on the right most uh, uh, side this is structure this is the wind chamber actually so obviously it, it, it is very evident that uh, these two structures are from some uh, dry arid area you know from some part of the world so we, we can easily guess through the uh, features which are there in the structures like uh, this is a uh, thick walls you know without any opening you know so this must be from uh, like a, a very hot dry place maybe some gulf country or somewhere so this is very very evident so we, i I'm, i need not actually name the uh, place but you can uh, easily you, you should be able to guess from the features of it like from where this should belong to so generally we can understand through this uh, uh, geographical uh, actually like a, such characteristics such features which represent some you know uh, responsiveness from uh, you know the, uh, through this design uh, you know for that particular uh, geographical area so further uh, 
down here you can see it's not just the uh, building like a material it's not just the form size and scale is the actually making it very very you know very very like a uh, intrinsic to the overall like a value system and the society and the community life so you can see some uh, uh, figurines also here some you can see patterns some drawings on the walls like a, what do they mean it, it, it may actually vary from like a tribe to tribe so they these these actually uh, patterns they belong to a particular tribe and uh, these uh, the arrangements of these lines and the way they in, in the, the thickness is what they adopt and the color combinations actually what you are saying it it looks like a piece of like a, a cloth or something it's taken from but not this actually graphic may be representing a particular tribe or maybe a social status of that particular family or maybe their identification mark through which these uh, any person from that tribe may easily decipher and understand like a which uh, like a, this uh, structure like a with whom uh, with, with which which person it belongs to with family it belongs to so it has actually such you know coded uh, like a pieces of like a information also through this uh, architecture so that is why this architecture is very very rooted to the place very very rooted to the community the second picture you can see it's not a piece of like a building but it's a piece of like a, a human ingenuity and creation where they have used uh, actually these natural roots of like a certain like a creepers and a very strong actually keepers creepers who have like a very uh, 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 strength uh, uh, like a, in their like a, a members or like a tensile strength you know they have used it to weave as a uh, like a, a bridge as a crossover you know for, for this uh, crossing this actually water stream which is flowing right here in the in the lower side you can see and uh, it's not just one level it is like a two tier uh, actually root bridge you know from the state of meghalaya in northeast india so this is a very very unique actually a uh, system like how nature can itself be used to uh, maneuver without harming it they could have used actually pieces of uh, maybe uh, timber over here or maybe like a steel over here to erect or uh, maybe a foot over bridge or something like that but no they have actually decided not to bring any other foreign material and utilize whatever they could you know on that uh, given place so it's a it's an excellent piece of actually human ingenuity and uh, creativity while maintaining the balance while maintaining the actually you know coherence with the nature so vernacular architecture represents that co uh, cohesiveness that coherence you know to go along with the nature not against it so that's the uh, most important essence from this uh, lecture i would like to deliver to you so why vernacular architecture is important in the like a strategies for like a sustainable design and this course why because vernacular architecture gives us a plenty of like example uh, examples what to use and what not to use so we can see like a, what kind of forms they have used what kind of materials they have used you know how they have maneuvered their design and construction in any given that location and the resources which are available at that particular space so it's a wonderful actually pieces of architecture uh, to actually uh, witness from across the world you know and it opens our eyes like a, we as a, like a trained architects and designers and engineers how we are contributing uh, by uh, going against the nature so the essence of this lecture is uh, in this feeling to understand the actually you know going along with the nature you see this third picture see the roofing is uh, looks like a piece of a maybe uh, a grassland or maybe a stony actually area where some lichens and grasses have actually grown up and this is precisely what it is you are not wrong you are absolutely right you know this actually uh, this roofing what you are seeing is a combination of like a thatch and straws you know on which lichen and moths and uh, these uh, green stuff they have actually grown up you know and uh, this is what we were actually uh, discussing in the chapter uh, chapter of like a uh, urban heat island effect uhie where the whole idea was to minimize the actually you know the heat you know quotient of that uh, particular building and in a whole the entire actually community in that uh, neighborhood so this uh, is uh, actually traditional way of utilizing this uh, uh, actually this green roofing uh, structure which is clearly seen over here Okay, in the some uh, recent times, you may be uh, 
like uh, you may have seen some uh, like a keen uh, architects and engineers they have actually designed uh, such structures which utilize uh, uh, adobe based uh, uh, like a material like adobe itself is a, like a, an excellent material which resist uh, like the heat transfer which resist even uh, uh, like the uh, other forms of like a, you know radiation and things it, it protects the interior from like outside so you, you see this building on the like a uh, top right side so this building doesn't utilizes uh, actually a concrete system but it uses like a uh, such like a uh, bricks you know and uh, mostly it uses this natural materials you can see over here these stone blocks you know and even to create it's like a uh, like a, these wall surfaces and it is g plus two like a high uh, structure which an adobe structure or a brick structure can easily withstand without any complication and utilizes these uh, uh, these uh, screen these jolly systems also to promote like a vegetation uh, ventilation and uh, you know the passage of like a uh, light in a like a controlled manner you know to the uh, like uh, inside you know these uh, all of these actually images you see in the recent times this building was actually uh, constructed using the uh, there's a courtyard uh, system of like uh, this uh, uh, vernacular architectural system which we discussed in the initial slides so it utilizes the same philosophy over here of creating like a corri uh, corridor and courtyards you know inside and the, the actually shaded actually portions where one can sit and relax in the like a hot hot and actually warm and humid actually atmosphere so these uh, kind of uh, like a uh, buildings are also coming up in the recent times but the number of these buildings are like uh, very few extremely like a uh, rare actually somebody goes for like a uh, such construction of uh, like a uh, systems but we actually must promote if not necessarily if it is not possible to go with the uh, pure adobe structures but at least we can promote uh, like an amalgamation of like a uh, both uh, uh, like a uh, philosophies of the like a uh, uh, modern construction methods and the vernacular architectural systems well vernacular architectural system has uh, some uh, uh, like a challenge is also like it poses from like a time to time so you can see uh, like this figure over here on the top left first picture if you see like how the uh, like a earthquake kind of situation may impact actually such buildings you know so this is one of the example so this study is very important for us to understand and re-engineer our like a uh, approach while designing like a building which utilizes a vernacular architectural system so how we can in a strengthen the actually the walling you can see over here on the first picture you know first sketch okay on the left side the second one uh, with the actually uh, example you know with the uh, real life a picture from like a, a nepal you can see over here and it happened in 2015 with the uh, the earthquake which happened at that time so the, how the entire actually wall surface got detached you know from the rest of the actually wall of the building in the third picture you can see like how this uh, uh, this is stone machinery actually uh, failed at from like a one portion so and uh, the, the last one like how this rupture happened and how this actually cracks got developed at the corners of these uh, openings of like a windows and doors so this is important for us to understand well the uh, vernacular architectural systems do not use actually metal or concrete as their primary material okay so how these uh, still can be reinforced can be actually uh, rectified for uh, saving from like a failure in like such scenarios okay some extreme examples of like a vernacular architectural system from across the world you can uh, google these images this uh, picture looks like a piece of like a fancy or maybe it, it looks like a maybe a uh, extreme tourism but uh, it's, a, it's a it's a it's actually you are seeing what you are seeing is a neighborhood you know which exists on the like a water body so these uh, families these people you know these uh, these uh, lady you are, you are seeing over here you know it, it's their like a daily activity to you know uh, 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 pass through this water which is flowing right beneath their houses so they have actually learned to live along with the water you know this is a picture from like a philippines and a vietnam area so from there uh, this picture was sourced and it it, it shows not humans not, not just can live on the like a ground itself but they can live in a, like a uh, water also but uh, like up to certain extent and how they can survive so this water is not just a uh, it, it's not just providing them a shelter but it offers them 
uh, food also it provides them some occupation also so this water is actually very integrated with their everyday uh, life the next example is a very famous picture you may have seen it i won't name the country you can uh, uh, search for it uh, yourself and uh, you try deciphering the kind of architectural system the vernacular architectural system actually this uh, country actually has is a very rich in like a such uh, presentation so you can see this is uh, this entire structure is uh, built in uh, like a, a mud walls utilizing like a you know uh, rafters of like a timber you know and there are very small like uh, openings with the thick walls you can see over these thickness the thickness of these walls on the, along the sides of these uh, windows okay so obviously this belongs to a very uh, hot area you know one of the hottest areas on the like a planet okay so this country this actually architecture belongs to that uh, particular country and uh, economically also this country has not evolved so much has not done like a much compared to the other countries who have developed very fast you know so uh, because economics also has uh, a direct correlation with the evolution of like architecture and structures so how even like while being in like a such a limitations of like a situation how this place how this uh, you know this community has done uh, wonderfully to evolve like a such a like a pleasing architectural system is worth actually looking at and uh, it gives a uh, uh, several like a uh, you know details like how people used to live so then another example you can see over here it looks like a uh, uh, maybe a burrow kind of a, you know where the wasps and other like uh, animals or maybe uh, small creatures and things would live but this, this is not actually it, it belongs to humans our like a uh, you know a few generation like earlier like ancestors they have lived in uh, uh, these uh, actually structures where you can see a number of like opening so this is carved actually it's a rock cut architecture is an excellent piece of like a rock cut architecture where the uh, the community has uh, dug deeper within a, a bigger block of like stone and they have created uh, habitable spaces okay moving on you can uh, see one arrangement over here in which uh, it talks about uh, uh, having a courtyard in the like a center and then uh, uh, other like a habitation like a spaces on the like a slides so this is shown over here like a, a family belongs to like a, a music and how they have created their like a chambers and their sides uh, on the sides of this uh, structure over here so you can see a drum room on this side singer sitting on this side and uh, maybe shrine room over here some visitors over here you know with the and these are all spaces woven around this uh, uh, this courtyard this central courtyard and uh, in section of you can see over here so this utilizes one can like a create an like a ambience actually uh, of like a, a living as well as like a you know musical activities and other sorts of like activities also so how architecture is rooted with the other uh, like a value systems of our like a, the society also is a, is a very evident from this place so this actually architecture uh, shows uh, gives us a glimpse of like a, that kind of like a uses as well well uh, this is a map you know so this talks about links so it, it's an it's from like an encyclopedia of vernacular architecture of the world so this uh, map actually has divided you know the regions of the world you know uh, which have like a one similar kind of like a, a vernacular architectural system so in the subcontinent of india you can see over here this falls under 1.6 1.5 1.7 so these are actually subtropical like a, a warm and humid areas you know the arid areas you know again like a, a forest like a subtropical area so this is divided majorly into like india is divided majorly into like a three parts you know and uh, this is very uh, evident one can actually understand if you study the uh, regional vernacular architectural systems of india and other countries also you can see like how they are divided and we can see the details over here so this uh, actually map is sourced from like that encyclopedia which uh, gives you know uh, beautiful examples of uh, architectural system from these many like vernacular uh, actually divisions of the world here uh, another example which i have shown uh, earlier you see like how beautifully they have used uh, these uh, a log of wood to create like a steps you know uh, kind of a, a ladder you know to rise from these waters and reach the uh, houses on the top 
so this building actually cannot be understood outside their cultural as well as, as well as their environmental context a fact which raises the issue of the who of the vernacular architecture so the, you can see over here a building is very very rooted you know with the like a environment of course and the context and is very very rooted with the culture also so the culture actually is the driver for driving force which gives you know the details and uh, uh, and the other features of like any architectural system in the next slide uh, here you can see this is an example actually taken from a uh, state of in uh, rajasthan in india and this particular place uh, is known as like a chittorgarh fort you may be uh, aware of or you may have seen actually this uh, uh, stamp this is actually uh, stamp in the commemoration of the victory you know and uh, you see this fort over here this is it's sitting on the top of a, a hill okay and uh, it has this uh, amazing actually this water pond also over here which harnesses actually which actually replenishes from the like a, you know water received from the, in the uh, monsoon months in the like a uh, rainy seasons and it stores it for the utilization over here and you can see like a, a temple is here and some more like a quarters are here created at the uh at the surface level of the water for like a bathing and other activities for like a sourcing water you can see the steps is uh, steps are going down from here okay and uh, there is an arrangement to actually uh, have this walling system so this is an actually amazing piece of architecture you can see you know on the fort construction from these like ancient times you know so you see that the cross section of wall is almost visible over here like how this wall is you know uh, is working as a like a retaining structure and it's holding water you know without leakage or without any like a problem for like a several centuries now so it's an amazing piece of like arch vernacular actually system without utilizing you know the harsher materials and harsher techniques and uh, uh, other things you know so this is a like a very very unique uh, architectural rajputana architectural actually system you know from uh, this place you can see you know and uh, another uh, actually piece uh, of like a wonderful like a architecture is uh, like a, these uh, step wells which you may have uh, uh, seen some images uh, or you may have been to one of uh, these actually uh, bowlies they are called bowlies so they retain uh, uh, water for the like a uh, summer months when rajasthan uh, experiences like uh, immense heat and uh, uh, arid actually climate so in these months uh, uh, anybody can uh, actually walk down so these see the arrangements of uh, these uh, uh, scissor arrangement of these like a uh, steps you know so that uh, uh, to actually create a, a deep trough over here which retains water you know without uh, much actually uh, evaporation and all so this uh, uh, sometimes these uh, actually wells are uh, as deep as like a uh, 100 feet and even more so there is one uh, actually famous uh, bauli uh, this adalaj in the like uh, next to like ahmedabad city so that is also one of the very famous examples you can see like how the daily uh, activities are being carried out by these uh, women you know and they are easily uh, actually uh, uh, getting down and uh, you know they, they are able to uh, fetch water from here so rajasthan uh, have been traditionally like a very dry and arid state and in the summer months uh, it gets parched and uh, the, the severe it faces like a severe scarcity of water and even in that like how uh, the uh, how the communities have uh, evolved ways to deal with it you know how they have evolved uh, uh, techniques to deal with it and how they have developed this vernacular actually architectural system is one of the eye opening actually uh, images for like a, as far as the understanding is uh, there of like a vernacular architectural systems okay so now i would like to give you uh, some examples in the like recent times like how vernacularity was adopted by uh, some very famous uh, down to earth architects you know who who, who they have like a, a lived like in a very like a gandhian philosophy very down to earth person in their perspective in their daily life and how uh, that philosophy has reflected even in their like architectural systems you know so this is uh, you may be aware of this name uh, architect lori baker well uh, he is uh, no more uh, now but uh, he has lived and he has kind of spent his life uh, in like uh, india and uh, all of his like uh, uh, architectural designs uh, they are uh, very very rooted to the place very very rooted to the 
traditions you know how to uh, deal with the uh, sun how to deal with the wind you know how to deal with the like a humidity of that place and they have actually evolved like a wonderful pieces of like a architecture so you can see over here in this building you know, so this entire actually uh, wall is a uh, uh, made up of like a brick you know and uh, you can see over is this brick is actually laid in a like a jolly function uh, allowing actually wind you know movement inside the quarters and with the presence of this water body over here certainly this water body is going to add to the uh, uh, actually the cool breeze you know it's, it's it's going to add to the you know minimizing lowering the temperature of the uh, prevailing wind in these uh, actually premise uh, another uh, uh, picture from his uh, one of the projects so you can see like how he has created even ramps you know using uh, nothing much but uh, uh, these uh, uh, like a brick jolly structures and a piece of like a concrete over here for this uh, like a creating these slabs and even at the bottom you can see there are like a you know brick pieces laid even in the uh, flooring of this material over here so you can see like how he has arranged the, the stone blocks in the like a lower uh, actually areas or even foundations to uh, utilize the local resources and minimize the uh, actually uh, uh, minimize the uses of like a factory made structures or a factory made actually uh, building components some more examples of how uh, wide span roofing also can be created out of uh, like a such vernacular architectural systems how the wider openings can be created by uh, these arched uh, uh, brick actually formations you know and uh, how the shelves and so see each and every detail each and every component of this building even if you see this the treatment in the ceiling it's not just a piece of like aesthetics but it works as a uh, like a uh, uh, like a structural member you know uh, giving strength to this uh, uh, entire actually uh, roofing systems you know and uh, eventually uh, working as a, like a smaller smaller actually uh, components and smaller smaller actually beams constituting into the uh, entire uh, uh, these are uh, uh, actually roofing system further uh, you can see over here it's not just the brick only like how the uh, bamboo can be utilized for creating a like a sunscreen of the uh, building so the one beautiful example i found here uh, with this picture so how these windows and other like a uh, building surfaces you know which are tentatively uh, exposed to the sun you know they are uh, covered in this like a bamboo uh, actually pieces and how these bamboo pieces are also arranged is uh, very pleasing to look at and they are actually uh, becoming a part of this uh, building in uh, like a, a whole sense this is not just a, like a you know external like a treatment or uh, uh, something given as a, like a, a fascia but it works as a, like a you know a integral member of this building so this bamboo is utilized even the formation of these uh, like a uh, window systems over here and the you know the other framing systems also over here you know and this uh, uh, portion which is the uh, uh, completely in the like exposed brick it, it appears to be like the staircase block and that is why it, uh, these bamboo is not covered on this but it uh, follows some uh, like a uh, brick jelly structures over here to allow like a light and ventilation inside uh, this uh, you may be like aware of this is in the city of like a Trivandrum in Kerala okay so this is the Indian coffee house uh, building which is designed which is existing in a like a busy actually uh, a place uh, in the city okay and this is uh, situated right next to maybe a, a movement area where is like a bus station or a, a such like activities and uh, uh, this building you can see is very unique it's like an approach it, it appears like this is a building which is you know forming uh, through like a helical actually structure you know so this is how this was like a design and executed and you see these uh, triangular openings to allow a passage of light and ventilation in this like a humid place such as like a trivandrum okay further uh, you see like how this bamboo is fashioned to create uh, this uh, staircase so usually we see like ladders in bamboo but this is a staircase you can see uh, made out of like a bamboo so a building uh, made up of like a brick you know mud treatment and bamboo well uh, uh, if we compare it uh, with the, like our LCA like exercise so the sources of this material is the nature only you know and very little like uh, intervention very little actually processing has uh, actually done uh, 
uh, with this actually met uh, these materials and once their lifetime is over well they are not going to lie down somewhere and waiting for like a thousand years to de uh, decay and decompose they can easily go back to nature and become part of uh, some other thing again in a very like a uh, short actually span of time so this is the actually that factor of uh, time in the like a, a biodegradability and uh, biodegradability because uh, in principle everything is biodegradable even if it takes like a 50000 years to decompose and decay but that time factor is very important how long it's going to uh, take to get like a uh, decay and decompose without leaving any like a hazardous actually uh, you know uh, effluents so this is one of the actually amazing pieces of like how a thought process can be utilized this to uh, create actually such structures another example i have taken of an architect from like sri lanka he is an architect like joffrey bawa you may have uh, heard his name or seen his like examples so he is also a kind of a we can say uh, 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 kind of a, a lorry baker of like sri lanka who was very gandhian in his approach and he has uh, uh, utilized this vernacular architectural systems to create and design and execute uh, several like uh, uh, marvelous uh, structures you know and uh, uh, which are still standing and they are the actually landmark pieces of uh, uh, the, uh, this philosophy, this sustainability uh, and uh, they represent uh, like a, such a like a, you know philosophy. The, the picture you are seeing over here is the parliament building of Sri Lanka and uh, you, you will be amazed to like uh, see this uh, building is made up of uh, like a sustainable material you know the uh, natural materials it doesn't utilizes uh, extensively like a uh, high impacting uh, uh, like a uh, materials or components in its building and this is uh, as big as like uh, any like a uh, parliament building of the like a uh, world and it houses actually the parliament uh, of like a uh, sri lanka and it is sitting like uh, next to like a uh, water body as you may be knowing uh, sri lanka is a very uh, like a uh, beautiful country it has a uh, uh, very uh, pleasing uh, actually uh, features natural features and is a very scenic country it has uh, like a uh, plenty of water in its uh, uh, like uh, if you see this uh, uh, these are the actually troughs and these lakes uh, around uh, these building so it is sitting it, it looks like this building actually floating on top of uh, uh, this uh, lake and uh, he has utilized actually this uh, traditional this uh, pitched roofing system in uh, executing this building and you see like how the scale of uh, these uh, uh, openings is getting reduced as we are going from ground level to up and up so it's a very uh, beautiful example of this system another example uh, uh, in the like a uh, modern times is again like utilizing uh, like uh, these uh, like a uh, fins for like a uh, creating like a uh, uh, controlling the sun or even like a uh, reducing the ambient temperature in the air you know so that that uh, so that it works uh, works as a, like a, a buffer area as a buffer zone to minimize and lower the temperature you know and uh, then again uh, not going very high in terms of like a plinth you know very close to the uh, ground level outside and uh, with the plenty of like uh, openings with the plenty of like a uh, grass and other vegetations in the surrounding definitely this place is going to be one of the uh, most like uh, ambient actually places for living and working some more examples like uh, utilizing uh, uh, the vernacular architectural systems of like uh, uh, creating like uh, uh, courtyards and other like uh, openings other control like openings with the uh, pergolas and uh, uh, other stuff so you can see over here with the incorporation of even like a uh, water in the interiors of this place so this uh, is not just for like a decoration as i have said stated before but it works as like a uh, a functional piece of like an element you know a natural element to bring down the temperatures you know in the inner like a uh, quarters some more uh, uh, actually images of the same philosophy okay in the uh, the recently constructed designs also how the vernacular uh, features can be utilized even with the uh, like a you know with the if you are the building is constructed with concrete and uh, uh, brick okay. this is actually a house uh, actually private property you can see over here the name on top so this was also designed by uh, Joffrey Bava and it sits right on top of uh, this water body and you see it it looks like a actually exam uh, image from like a wonderland so how this place has actually 
uh, utilizes you know these uh, uh, these uh, fins these jallies and with the like a glass covering it at the same time it gives like a beautiful like a you know view of this like a beautiful place this water body this uh, you know this lush green vegetation in the like a vicinity so one of the actually most amazing actually pieces of architecture uh, we can see from like a, the sri lanka uh, which are designed by jafri bawa okay another uh, the example i have taken the last example in the uh, this lecture is of like a charles coria well charles coria uh, we cannot say him as a complete like vernacular uh, like architectural uh, vernacular architecture but uh, yes his uh, philosophy his uh, interpretation of his like architecture was very very rooted with the vernacular uh, actually architectural systems you know and that is why i have actually chosen his works you know and him to uh, actually portray over here in this actually lecture so you see this picture on the top uh, on the left side this is a book cover of a, like a very famous book named like a charles coria by kenneth frampton okay so we can see like how uh, in his designs he has utilized the uh, the philosophy of uh, these uh, uh, pergolas to create like a you know interesting interplay of shade and light in the interiors you know and control the temperatures control the actually glare you know so this is uh, this visual is from like jawahar kala kend from like in jaipur you know which he has uh, designed so you can see in the like a uh, uh, this courtyard uh, this uh, the uh, the steps are designed in the fashion of like the steppes which we saw from like a uh, rajasthan okay so in the same actually philosophy he has designed uh, this courtyard utilizing the uh, red sandstone sandstone of, uh, of uh, like rajasthan some more examples you can see in you know, like a small thumbnails over here which he has designed over like the the years so several uh, such examples you can see from here like uh, this is the uh, gandhi museum from like a uh, sabarmati uh, ashram you know so how he has uh, designed uh, the courtyards and how he has planted trees what is the scale of it you know so they are all actually beautiful uh, examples of like adoption in the recent time so we will see uh, a grammar of like a uh, charles coria like how he has followed this uh, grammar was the philosophy so you can see like on the how he has handled like a site plans there are several uh, examples given over here on the uh, on this column you can see starting from like a uh, like it has like a, a hudko housing actually a plan it has like a malabar cement town save you know several like a acc town save so, so how he has handled the site plan for like a planning of the like a housing and the row housing okay so this is given over here the kind of types what he has used in his like a uh, designs over here in these uh, like a projects so the unit uh, actually how habitations you know are detailed over here you can see the very famous like a bela housing at the bottom you know in the next column you can see the in unit actually modules how he has designed these uh, unit modules of these uh, uh, actually projects and how these modules are actually uh, in relationship with each other what is the kind of a uh, uh, staggering he has used what is the kind of a, you know the arrangement he has utilized somewhere they are like a you know at some angle somewhere they are at sitting at the uh, 90 degrees somewhere they are like a little bit like a placed and uh, creating like a you know interest, interesting space or courtyard maybe in the front so this is the kind of uh, you know the uh, the arrangement he has played with to create actually interesting spaces you know and then in a bigger group like how he has utilized these uh, generational approach of the like a multiplication how uh, these entire units in a collective way they are going to you know behave like you know creating like a, a interesting like a you know interactive spaces for this community you know some working spaces some spaces for like a, a celebrations you know festivals etc you know so and then the functions like what are the uh, functional areas of these uh, units and where they are placed you know so you, we can see like a, uh, a very uh, uh, beautifully actually laid uh, uh, this uh, uh, by the actually assistant professor over here he has actually beautifully laid uh, this uh, uh, graph, uh, grammar of like a charles coria's uh, designs okay so in uh, one of his uh, very acclaimed projects this is the city center project from the city of kolkata okay so this was designed by him so you can see like a uh, how he has created uh, uh, brought those uh, natural elements from the like vernacular architectural systems you know how he has used wider like uh, openings you know how he has used uh, per pergolas and uh, semi actually uh, shaded areas here on the like uh, in this this part and how the different activities they have actually he has colored in the different actually colors all together very striking very appealing you know very very strong colors you know so this is one of the acclaimed projects of uh, 
like his design and in the planning also like you can see how he has worked on the grid you know and how he has uh, diva, uh, actually uh, kind of a, uh, created this interplay of like a different activities how he has always kept uh, kind of a, this uh, courtyard actually planning and such actually philosophy uh, in the uh, in the center of his designs and there is always a tree a neem tree banyan tree or people tree in the center of actually that courtyard uh, bringing in that uh, the ancient actually philosophies of india of this uh, uh, courtyard planning and this community actually gathering you know along with the emphasized by the these uh, steps arrangements for like a smaller like a performances and events and things like that so this is one actually beautiful piece of like composition you can see of like a different elements you know different different actually functional uh, units of uh, uh, this uh, structure over here further uh, as i have stated earlier this is the uh, very famous actually a uh, shot from the jawahar kala kendra so how he has actually uh, created uh, you see this uh, podium is working as a like a you know uh, this a uh, performance center for the uh, this uh, group of like artists and the audience can uh, sit on the uh, on the surrounding on on these steps you know leisurely stretching to these uh, uh, these uh, grasslands and, uh, and enjoying a complete like a uh, open view from the like a uh, uh, top so this is the kind of a philosophy he has he has used so this is uh, overall actually uh, model of uh, this actually Jawahar Kala Kendra you can see over here they are created by this uh, uh, student okay so you can see the philosophy how he has created the uh, openings and uh, you know in these uh, squares also how he has created these openings and he has created uh, geometrical actually play depending upon the like a mandala philosophy so this is a beautiful actually uh, example of vernacular architecture another uh, landmark example like how to create like interesting uh, interactive spaces uh, is this actually project you know from uh, mumbai so this is this stands out in this entire landscape as a, like a unique actually architectural piece and uh, it, it, it uh, the kind of a, you know the uh, the philosophy this building has so uh, creating like a very uh, uh, interesting like a mezzanine floors you know uh, uh, promoting like a exchange promoting like a uh, connection you know from like a uh, uh, one uh, actually unit of like this housing to the next unit and that is how he has actually uh, kind of uh, interconnected the balconies of two to three like a different housing units at like a one common actually space which is double height over here so one of the very unique approaches in uh, his design so this is some more detail of the same uh, structure and uh, yeah so this is in an overall sense if you see vernacular architecture uh, offers uh, actually connection with the place connection with the culture connection with the like a climate you know and that is actually that has been the uh, actually guy uh, driving actually force for like a sustainable design and this is how uh, the communities have survived for like a thousands and thousands of like years and uh, uh, this is how they have uh, lived you know along with the nature the the philosophy we i uh, i discussed at the beginning of my this uh, course you know even star, even before starting this lecture was like how the humans how our like ancestors they have lived for like a thousands of thousands of years without getting uh, actually in trouble what uh, this modernity in the like after in the post industrialized era has actually brought in so this is the only actually example if you see like living in the sink with the nature and uh, for that actually this vernacular architecture is the biggest example vernacular architecture is the actually solution uh, for living uh, actually healthy and the nature integrated actually lives so we must actually uh, put a vernacular architecture like a strategic system in our like a uh, understanding in our like a philosophy and wherever and whenever there is any need so you must actually employ uh, this philosophy to uh, go in the sync with the nature so with this i would like to uh, bring end to this lecture thank you everyone